awesome. So for those of you guys who have been here the past couple of weeks, the series is called How to Friend, um, learning about how to um, have good friendships, um, what sort of relationships should you want to be in. Last week, Brant preached about um, when to get rid of friends or when to move on to a different season of life with those friends. Um, and today, the, one of the main points that I'm going to be um, speaking on tonight is that it matters who you choose to surround yourself with. Um, the friends that you choose to have matters um, because you become like the people that you're around. Um, and to illustrate this, um, I have a question for you guys. I want you to think about some of the closest friends that you have or um, some of the people that you spend a lot of time with. Now, how many of you guys have ever started doing some weird habit that that person has? Some weird mannerism, like a goofy laugh or weird phrase or dance move, anybody? Can I get some good, anyone have a good example? No? Yeah. Yeah, Reagan. It says Fida. In what context? <laughs> That's awesome. Anyone, any other ones? Leah? Awesome. Oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, well, one of the examples that I have of this is so when I when I was in New York the past couple years, I babysat for this Korean family in New York, right? And with these kids, whenever they would um, like mess up, like a kid would get super messy, spill something on the floor. Um, you know, they just got home from messy night at youth group. The um, the parents would say, oh, you, like instead of, oh, no, or, uh, and I, I never said it. Like the whole time that I was babysitting, um, I was there almost every day for three months. And then, of course, like I get to my college campus, like on school, <laughs> at school, and I I don't even remember exactly what happened, but I think, Maybe I missed an assignment or something like that. And out of nowhere, I just say, oh, you. And I was like, where did that come from? It, it literally scared me because I, I had no control over saying that. I, like, it completely startled me. Um, it was like, I'm not Korean. What are people going to think of me if I start saying this all the time, right? Um, and so the point that I'm getting at um, with those examples is even when you're not aware of it, you become like the people that you choose to surround yourself with. Um, so you need to surround yourself with people you want to be like. Um, and the people that, the person you want to be in the future um, is largely determined by who you surround yourself with now. Um, and you also want to be to others what you want them to be to you um, because who you surround yourself with is going to affect um, the way that you live and the way that you act, even if you don't realize it. Um, and if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to go to Proverbs 12, 26. Um, so you can start turning there. Proverbs is pretty awesome. It has a, a whole lot to say about friendships, about what it means to be a good, good friend. It's written by a guy named Solomon, who, other than Jesus, is known for being one of the wisest people um, that ever lived. And so uh, it's good to take notes on some of the stuff that he has to say. Um, and one of the wise things that he says in Proverbs 12, 26 is that the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the ways of the wicked lead them astray. Um, one thing I wanna point out here, when it says that the righteous choose their friends carefully, um, 2 Corinthians and Romans um, say something that when you accept Jesus, when you choose to follow the gospel, that you are made righteous in the sight of the Lord, that he takes on your sin and you're made righteous before him. Um, so this verse is talking about you. Um, another way that it could read is, 
It could say something like, Christians choose their friends wisely, but the ways of the wicked lead them astray. Um, so what does that mean? For those of you who are Christians, who call yourself a Christian, who believe the gospel, the goal should be coming more like Christ. And actually the word Christian in the, um, in the Bible, it means something like little Christ is the, is the translation of that. So you are called to reflect Christ in the way that you live, um, in the things that you do. You should be seeking to be more Christ-like. So if you think about some of the attributes of Christ, the way that he lived his life, you can begin to apply that um, to yourself and to your friends and ask yourself things like, are your friends moving you towards being more loving? Are, do you, um, do you ex like have more fruits of the spirit when you're around your friends? Are you more uh, loving, patient, kind? Um, do you have more goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? Are they bringing those fruits out of you when you're around them? Um, and are they pointing you back towards Christ? Or, on the other side of that, you can ask yourself, do my friends, um, do they make me, do I find myself doing things that I shouldn't be doing when I'm around them? Um, do you talk negatively about other people when you're with your friends? Do you end up comparing yourself to other groups of people or talking uh, drama when you're with your friends? Um, or do you do things that hurt other people even if you think you're just being funny when you're with them? So in the same way that you start doing some of the weird things that your friends do, right, um, without realizing it, everything else that your friends do affects you too. So surround yourself with people you want to be like, that point you back to Christ. And you can ask yourself, are my friends bringing me closer to Christ? Are they bringing me closer to God? What am I like when I'm around my friends? Maybe some of you guys are, are questioning this a little bit. Maybe you're going, ah, oh, that sounds great and all. Like, living like Christ, being more loving and more Christ-like sounds great, but how is that going to help me get through high school? Maybe you're thinking, if I do that, people won't like me, or maybe you feel like you have to act a certain way um, in order to survive high school, in order to survive life, and this just isn't going to work. Like, if I change the friends that I hang around, I, I really don't know what my life is going to look like if I do that, um, and I don't feel like it's going to end well. Um, if that's you, there's something I want to point out, and I said this the last time that I was up here too, and if there's anything that you guys get from any message that I ever preach, I want you to take this. Um, Brant and I and your youth leaders don't tell you these things because we just want you to follow some rules in this book. It's because we know the freedom that this offers. We know how good life is living for God. There is life and joy and freedom and every good thing that you could ever need um, in Christ, which is shown in the pages of this book. It's shown in the commands that are written in this book. And I'm preaching this because I know what you need is here. <laughs> In God is every good thing that you could ever need. In him is life and life abundantly. I don't tell you these things just so you follow them. I tell you them because I want you to see you set free. I want to see you living in the fullness of joy that can only come from the Lord and from what's written in his book here. I want to see you step into all of the awesome things that I know that God is holding out to you right now. So when God says in the words that we need to be careful with who we surround ourselves with, that the call is to be more Christ-like, to overflow with the fruits of the Spirit um, in everything that we do, it's not just another rule like when your parents tell you to do the dishes. Um, the direction of God is exciting. Guys, the stuff that's written in this book is so exciting. It should make you so excited because... Um, this is the key to living in fullness of life. This is the key to being set free. This is the key to living in joy and to living fully content in everything that you ever do and just having, living the best life that you could possibly have, stepping into all that God has for you. So a question you can ask yourself when you read a command or instruction in the Bible, whether it's this or anything else, you can ask yourself, God, what good thing do you have for me in this? How is this better? 
And he always has an answer to that. He doesn't just tell you a command because he wants to take away fun. He's the author of fun, guys. Everything in this book is leading to something better for you, including what you do with your friends. Um, God isn't telling us to surround ourselves with other Christians, to be careful um, who you're close friends with because he wants you to be hated by people or um, to have a hard time in high school or lo alone or whatever it is that you might be worried about. Um, he's saying this because he's saying that I have something better for you. When God convicts you of something you're doing, what he's saying is that there is something better. And here's the really exciting news. Um, even if you are worried about having to change your group of friends or the circle that you're in, God also says that he desires for you to have good friends. This is also something that's written out in the word. So when you need to change the groups that you're hanging out with, you don't have to be worried um, about if you're ever going to have people to hang out with again. Um, because God says that he desires that you would have good friends. And there's lots of examples of this in the Bible. Um, I can give you a bunch um, sometime later, but one, for example, is Hebrews 10.25, and it says, do not neglect meeting together and encouraging one, one another in the Lord. God wouldn't tell you to do that, to encourage, to encourage one another and continue to meet together if he wasn't giving you people to meet with, if he wasn't giving you friends to be in fellowship with. Um, so he's going to provide a way to make that command happen. So you don't have to be worried about if you're going to be alone or if you'll never have friends, because that's something that God desires for you, too. You don't have to be afraid of following through on the things that God tells you to do. You can also pray that God would bring you good friends. That's one of the practical implications of this message that I'm giving you right now is that you can pray and there is power in your prayer and God, I believe, is going to honor that. You can ask him what he wants you to do in the relationships that you're in and the friendships that you're in and you can be confident that he will answer even if it doesn't feel like that prayer is being answered right away. Um, he is going to answer that. Two. So two things from what I, in light of what I've just said that you can do. One, Ask yourself, are my friends pointing me closer to God? What am I like when I'm with my friends? Am I becoming more like Christ when I'm around my friends? Are they pointing me in that direction? Two, is that you can pray that God would show you um, the friends he has for you. You can ask that he would bring good friends into your life. Um, and I believe that he will do that if you, if you seek him on that. Now, I also recognize that a lot of you maybe are, are hearing this and you're like, okay, Sydney, like, I, I totally agree with everything that you're saying. Um, I already have awesome Christian friends. Uh, I absolutely agree. But maybe what you're struggling with is that you, you already have some good Christian friends um, that you're close with, that genuinely want to follow the Lord, um, that are follow God, but you feel like they keep falling short in your life. Um, and you're really struggling in that friendship right now, and you're going, okay, what do I do with that? This doesn't sound like what you've been saying. Um, and if that's you, let me reassure you of this, that your friends don't always have to be further ahead than you in their walk with God. They don't need to be perfect. Now, now Jesus' life gives a really good example of this. A lot of you, I'm sure, have read through some of the Gospels and know about the 12 disciples and the group that Jesus kind of hung out with through most of his, his life on, on earth here. He had a group of 12. And what's important to note in this, even though Jesus was like obviously super far ahead of all of those friends that he surrounded himself with, they were all moving in the same general direction. They all wanted to get closer to Christ. They all wanted to follow the Lord. They were all seeking to live the life that the Bible lays out for them um, and to follow God. So it's important in your friend group, even if you're far ahead of, farther ahead than a lot of your friends, make sure that they're going in the same direction as you. Um, if their heart is to pursue the Lord and you see growth in them, um, I, I believe that that could definitely be one of the relationships that God's calling you to be in. Um, And when you look at the disciples as well um, with Jesus, you can see that they were, they were far from perfect. Um, for example, there was, uh, you know, Peter that d denied Jesus three times when he 
uh, most needed him to be there. Um, when he was being sent to the cross, there was the Garden of Gethsemane, um, where Jesus was literally like sweating blood, and the disciples fell short there too. They didn't really show up for him in the way that you would want your friends to in a moment like that. Um, they forgot about some of the instructions of the Lord. Um, so even though the disciples, we see them as really good people, they also fell short as friends. Um, hmm. Your friends, no matter how good they are, the truth is they will probably fall short at some point. They won't always do everything you want them to. Maybe they've hurt you unknowingly. You could follow um, this entire message perfectly. You could have amazing friends, amazing Christian friends leading you to the Lord, um, and they might still fall short or be lacking in some way at some point in that friendship. Um, Hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, it is only God who knows exactly what you need that can love you perfectly. So you're never going to be able to love your friends perfectly apart from God telling you how to. Um, you're not going to be able to love them perfectly. They're probably not going to love you perfectly in return because that's God's job. He's the only one that is able to know exactly what you're going through, um, to know everything that you're dealing with. And like Jesus... You can have friends that fall short, and you can continue to love them selflessly. And that's what God calls us to do. Um, we are called to love selflessly. The Bible says that love is not self-seeking. It's, it's completely selfless. So if you're loving somebody, if you're loving your friend, because, just because you're hoping to be loved in return, it's not really love. If you're seeking something in return, then it's not really love. And maybe... Some of you need to hear that right now because the love that God shows you requires nothing of you. Even if you hated him your entire life, God would still love you. There is no number of mistakes you could ever make that would change his love for you. And if this love, it is this love that God tells you to pour out to other people, to receive from him and to pour out to those he's placed around you. And I get it, I know that's super hard to do because you can't love the friend, your friends the way that God calls you to apart from him. It's not possible. The, the type of love that the Bible describes that he calls us to that God gives you, you cannot show other people apart from receiving that from God. Um, and there's, that's the way it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be something so supernatural about the way that you love that that says something to the rest of the world where there it go, I don't know how that's possible. That can only be something supernatural. There must be a God if that person is able to love in every circumstance, is able to love without wanting anything in return, is able to just love completely selflessly in everything that they do. That is such a testament to the world. And the reason that Jesus was able to love his friends the way he did was because of his relationship with the Father. Um, there's this story in, in Jesus's life. It's shown in John 2, 23, 24, if you want to look at it. Um, but basically, Jesus is one of the iconic moments. He's healed a bunch of people doing signs, wonders, miracles, all of the things that Jesus loves to do, right? And in the verse, it says, as he's with the people, it says that he did not give himself to them, or he did not entrust himself to them. And Clearly, Jesus, like, so gave himself to people, so entrusted, entrusted himself in the way that he gave all of himself to them, and that he, he died on the cross for them, he gave everything that he had to them, but that's not what the verse is saying. What it's saying is that he, he didn't get his identity from the people. When he was doing all of his ministry, all the signs, wonders, and miracles, he didn't take his identity, he didn't find his contentment, didn't find his affirmation, his joy, um, anything like that. He didn't find it in the people that he was preaching to, uh, the people that he was healing. He got that entirely from the Father. Um, and the only way that he was able to do all of the things that he did for people, that he was able to love them even to going to the cross while he was hated, persecuted, living in so many trials, um, was because he received everything from the Father. He continued to meet with, 
with the Father and receive his affirmation, his contentment, his identity, everything that he needed, he received from the Father. And this is how we're called to live. Jesus was mirroring that for us, that we are called to live like Jesus in that we receive all, everything that we have from God. We receive our identity, everything that we need from him so that we're able to pour it out to others. Another verse in Proverbs that talks about friendship that I just love um, is Proverbs 18.24. I bet a lot of you guys have heard this before, and it says, One with many friends may be harmed, but there is a friend who stays closer than a brother. Jesus is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. So when your friends fall short, when your family falls short, when you feel like your life is falling short, you have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Jesus is walking alongside you. He has everything that you need and more. Everything you feel like you're lacking, whether it's friendship um, or anything else, Jesus has that for you. You just have to turn to him, ask him, seek God for what you need. Um, He wants to give it to you. You don't ever have to fear being alone. You don't ever have to worry about your reputation or popularity status. You don't need to fear being unloved or unwanted. You don't need to worry about anything because you have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So surround yourself with good people that point you back towards Christ. Who you're with is who you become like. But above all, let Jesus be the one you are with the most. The more time you are with him and focused on him, the more like him you will become and the better and freer your life will be. Now, to finish up this message, I, I just felt like God put something on my heart to do that's a little different. Because um, I know that I could spend all night here telling you guys how amazing <laughs> it is to live with God, how all the freedom and the goodness and all of these good things that are available in him, but I know that he needs to show that to you himself, um, that you really need to hear that from him. Um, so in a second, I'm going to have you guys close your eyes. I'm actually going to sit down here because I really don't, you guys don't need to pay attention to me anymore. Um, and I'm just going to ask you guys to imagine some things. Um, I'm going to sort of walk you through a story. Um, and this is just a chance to let God speak to you and, and speak life into your life. So if you guys would just close your eyes. I want you to imagine um, one of the times that you felt the most alone, that you needed help, that you felt most hurt or desperate. Um, Maybe it's recent or maybe it's from a long time ago, whether that's at school, at home, outside, I don't know where that is for you. Um, But just think of, of that time where you felt alone and desperate and really needed help, that you needed a friend. And if you can't think of something right now, just ask God to bring something to mind. Take note of how you're feeling in that moment that you're imagining. What are you lacking? What do you need most? Maybe that's joy. Maybe that's love. Maybe that's someone to listen. Someone that understands could be peace, freedom, a hug, a friend, Um, just what is it that you need in that moment? Now I want you to imagine that Jesus is walking up behind you. He places a hand gently on your shoulder and this deep love just comes over you. Without saying anything, Jesus just holds you for a while. In the midst of whatever you're going through, he's holding you. 
As he's holding you, your breath begins to slow and you relax as a deep comfort just wraps itself over you. You know he sees you. He loves you. He loves you. You're not alone. You were never alone. Now imagine that Jesus um, is coming around in front of you or besides you, and he sits down. He sits with you. And you look up into his eyes, and you see that a tear falls down his face. As you watch the tear fall, you know that he cares deeply about you, and he understands your pain. What do you feel? <laughs> as you're watching. And Jesus speaks softly to you. And right now, just ask, ask God, what is he saying to you? What is it that you need to hear from him in that moment? Maybe he's saying, I love you. You're not alone. I see you. Whatever it is, whatever you need to hear, Whatever is coming to mind right now, Jesus is speaking to you. And as he says these words, he pulls a gift out from behind him and he hands it to you. You reach out your hands to receive it and you take the gift, you open it, and at first, all you see is this warm light. And as you continue to open it, you find that the thing that you need most, whatever you feel lacking in, is there. Maybe you need hope, and as you open the box, hope just comes over you. Maybe you need freedom, and you feel everything that you're struggling with wash away, and you feel free. You find everything that you need as you open the gift. You smile up at Jesus and every negative thing you were feeling goes away as you look up at him. He smiles back at you with this deep, deep joy. And he says, I have everything you need and I delight to give it to you. I have everything that you need and I delight to give it to you. I have never left you and never will. I love you. Now this story, you guys, it's not just a story. It's true. Jesus delights to give you everything that you need. That doesn't mean life will always be easy, but he is a friend that's always there. He will never fail you. Whatever you're going through, whatever you feel like you need, Jesus has it. I just want to take a second now and just pray and ask Jesus for whatever you need. If you guys can just open your hands out in front of you like you're receiving the gift from God um, and just begin to ask him for what you need and believe, you guys, that he wants to give it to you. I just thank you that you delight to give us everything that we need, that you promise that you'll provide for our every need if we would just seek you. I pray that you would just begin to pour out whatever it is that these students, whatever they need from you right now, God, would you just um, give that to them, Lord? Would they feel your hope, your presence? Would everything that they're struggling with, all of the fear, whatever, um, is holding them back from the life that you have for them, God, I pray that that would just fall off right now. 
that they would step into the abundant life that you have for them, Lord. I pray that you would um, begin to speak to them about how you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. God, that they would walk in the truth of that this week and the rest of their life, Lord, that they wouldn't fear um, fear anything, God, just knowing that they have you walking alongside them and that you're able and willing and rejoice to give them everything that they need and everything that they may struggle with, Lord. I thank you that you are a God of abundantly more, that you can do far more than we ask, think, or imagine, and we don't have to limit you to what we think is possible, God, that you delight to give us everything we need and abundantly more, God, that you are a God of abundantly more. I pray that you would just show that to these students this week and even tonight, God. Um, just thank you for everything that you are and everything that you have done and continue to do for us. Jesus' name.